Okay, so we are going to talk about one of America's greatest musical geniuses, uh, perhaps the greatest of the 20th century. Born in 1899 to a middle class black family in Washington, D.C. Mom was a teacher and pianist. Father actually was a surveyor and later worked uh, at the White House uh, as a butler. Um, the uh, young uh, Edward uh, Kennedy Ellington, uh, I always wondered about that name, and I finally figured it out. You see, his mother's maiden name was Kennedy. So she was a very strong woman. She made sure her son had the name, not just of the father, but her name as well. So he was Edward Kennedy Ellington and he did love his mother just like she loved him. As a pianist, the young Edward got piano lessons from mom. But early on, he decided he wanted art as his vocation. And he went to technical school, became an artist, and was actually working as a sign painter as he was dabbling in music a little bit to make extra money, having little bands, playing a little piano here and there, that kind of thing, you know. And the deal was if he went into a club or a bar or whatever to get a gig and they refused to hire him, he would then offer his services as a sign painter in order to advertise the group that the club did hire. So he was there to get the money one way or another. Businessman from beginning to end. Uh, as things developed, he leaned more and more toward music and less and less toward sign painting. Uh, probably printing presses and things like that to overtook him. Um, he had a group called the Washingtonians. And eventually they moved up north to New York City. They were actually in competition for a gig with the great Joe King Oliver. And of course, they did not have a chance called King Oliver was the king of jazz. But King Oliver overplayed his hand and asked for more money than the club was willing to pay. And so young Edward Kennedy Ellington and his Washingtonians moved into the Cotton Club and became known as Duke Ellington and his orchestra because the man was always so very elegant. He continued his career in music for six decades, you heard it, 60 years on the road as a performer, arranger, composer, and perhaps the most prolific composer of all times. It is said that he would write music on napkins in a restaurant or toilet paper in the bathroom. He just wrote music and that's all it was to it. He had great musicians and he was smart in his selection of musicians and healing his arrangements to the strengths of his musicians and away from their weaknesses. So his parts would not be first, second, third trumpet, it would be for this guy, for that guy, for that guy by name. Great players like Johnny Hodges and you know, just so many others we can name of ever Jimmy Blanton. We just go on and on and on with the players that came out of that band. Uh, Paul Gonzalez, we can just go. Well, what can I say? Just go on and on. Uh, you name them, they were in that band. Uh, the great Bubba Mowley uh, brought uh, the Mutes uh, to the band very, very, very early on in their run at the Cotton Club, and that became a, a fixture within the Duke Ellington sound uh, throughout his entire career. Um, he was a collaborator. Uh, he invited musicians in the band to write, and he would play their music. He invited the young Juan Tizzo to write and bring that Spanish tinge into the music. And that was a very successful pairing. He invited the young pianist, uh, Mr. Billy Strayhorn, Sweet Pea, to uh, come to the band and contribute uh, his talents. And he did, including writing the theme song for the Duke Ellison Orchestra, Take the A-Train. Many of the suites and extended pieces, both uh, secular and liturgical, were written in combination with Peter Strayhorn. So Duke Ellington realized his own talent, but he also realized his talents 
in others and were willing to share the stage and to collaborate. As the music industry does change, styles do change. In the 40s, you got the bebop, and in the 50s, you got the hard bop, and of course, the big band from beginning to fall off the planet. Duke Ellington had a big concert in 1956 at the Newport Jazz Festival, and they showed up and showed out. This relaunched them into great prominence and probably saved the band because there were periods along the way when Duke had to cut the band down to smaller ensembles just to kind of meet payroll. His music went in every direction. He said he defied category. So you couldn't call him a jazz or a swing or this. He did liturgical music, he had some classical things, he had extended pieces, he had suites, he had orchestral things, he had everything there was. Duke Ellington was a prolific composer and he ran his band successfully for 60 years and probably contributed more music in terms of compositions and arrangements than any human being in the 20th century. We will always remember Edward Kennedy Ellington. Winter Marcellus is made sure of that because he created the Essentially Ellington Festival and every year high school players from around the country get a chance to explore the music of Duke Ellington and then meet in festivals all over the country culminating in the Grand Festival in New York City to celebrate the music and legacy of the greatest composer of the 20th century, Mr. Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington. Thank you very much.